Welcome to Robin's Nest Studios, I'm Ken. In today's video, I finally get around to painting my Medusonia. I finally got around to painting the Medusonia. For those of you who don't know what that is, the Medusonia is the alt sculpt for Absalonia Terror of Everblight, otherwise known as Abbey One. The Medusonia is part of Privateer Press's monthly subscription service known as Mini Crate. I forget which month the Medusonia was, but I got her a while back. The sculpt originally was holding a helmet in its left hand, but I snipped the helmet off and I replaced it with a severed head. And then at the bottom of that severed head, I took a little bit of green stuff, kind of make that look a little bit gruesome. I've been really excited about this Medusonia sculpt. I've been wanting to play Abby 1, but I'm not a big fan of the traditional sculpt for her. So now that I have this, I'm going to give her a shot. I decided with this model, I was going to take my time and really see what I'm capable of. And we're going to paint this Medusonia in my army's paint scheme, utilizing those tans, purples, and reds. First thing we did with the Absalonia is we primed her in black and then we took a white paint through the airbrush and gave her a zenithal highlight. After that we take some alien purple from Army Painter and we apply that to all of the fleshy bits, skin, scales, things like that. Make sure you get a nice even coating on the face, try to keep your brush moving in one direction. After that's been base coated, we're going to take some cold gray to the snakes, and this is going to be the base coat for those. The reason we're painting these snakes gray is because it's her hair, and with my theme, all the hair is white. And we come in with the second coat of purple to all those fleshy bits from earlier. Now we come in with the second thin coat of cold gray to the snakes. Next we come in with the Vallejo Game Color Heavy Brown and we use that to base coat all the belly scales. After the belly scales we're also going to use this heavy brown to base coat the rattle at the end of the tail. We're also going to come in with that heavy brown and we're going to paint in the horns on the head and the little uh, protrusions that she has on her arms. Looks like they're like scales. Then after they dry, we come in with a second coat of that heavy brown to all the areas that we previously painted. Be sure to keep your brush moving in one direction to help combat any kind of texturing the paint might leave. Again we're coming in with that second coat on all those scaly bits. Now we're going to do the first stage of our highlights on the skin with a 50-50 mixture of ooze purple and alien purple from Army Painter. The alien purple from earlier was our base tone for this skin. Then we slowly work in some pure ooze purple for our brightest highlight. I fiddle with this going back and forth trying to get the smoothest transition as I could without completely distorting the face. Next up we slap down some Army Painter Matte Black on all of the feathers. Then 
Then I come in with the trusty makeup brush with some cold gray on it and I give a nice dry brush into all those feathers. Now it's time to highlight those belly scales. I do that by taking some Vallejo model color Iraqi sand and slowly mixing that into the heavy brown from earlier that we base coated it with to incrementally increase that highlight. I slowly add a little bit more Iraqi sand up until we have pure Iraqi sand as our brightest highlight. I do this for the belly, the rattle, and then all of the other scale bits that we painted with that heavy brown. When we get to the pure Iraqi sand, we're basically just edge highlighting everything. After we've finished up with the tans, it's time to move on to the reds. We're going to base coat this cloak in Vallejo model color dark red. I try to be mindful of my brush strokes, making sure I'm going in one direction. And I also do that same thing when it comes to that second thin coat. Keep that brush moving in one direction and things should come out nice and smooth. Next up we base coat all of the armor bits with Vallejo Game Color Gunmetal. And before you guys call me on it, yes I am aware that the paint brand's actual name is Vallejo, but I've been calling it Vallejo for so long that's just what it is in my brain. Sorry. Now we take some Army Painter Leather Brown and we cut in all the belts. Now my first step to highlighting this cloak is I take some Army Painter Pure Red and I mix that into the dark red from earlier. We slowly increase this red into the dark red until we come up with a pure red highlight. By this step, I had pure, pure red loaded into my brush here, doing that final highlight. Always being mindful of my brush strokes, trying to keep a nice, smooth blend. To add some depth to our armor, I took some platinum silver from Vallejo Game Color and I added this to the center of all of our armor pieces. And now we are on to the most tedious part of my paint scheme, the gold trim. I kind of dread this on any model that I end up coming across that has armor on it because to keep it in sync with the army, it all has to have this gold trim on it. And it's a time sink. I'm taking it slow, not trying to rush myself, because I don't want to accidentally get gold on that purple that we just worked so hard on. Now the time has come to paint the eyes. The first thing I do is I take some of that pure army painter red, and I paint in Medusonia's eyes and all the snake's eyes as well. Don't 
forget to get that second coat in there. I'm making sure to take it slow because I don't want to have to redo those cheeks. It's about this time I realized the cloak wasn't really popping to me. So I ended up taking a 50-50 mixture of Iraqi sand and pure red to try and create an even brighter highlight on this cloak. After placing a very rough bright highlight with that mixture, I came in with some of that pure red from Army Painter but in a glaze form. And I took that and glazed it over all of those highlights that we just added. Adding more and more of a glaze until I have a nice smooth transition. All the while continuing to be mindful of my brush strokes. Then I bounce back to doing the eyes. I take Vallejo model color light orange and I fill in a slightly smaller area than I did with the red in all of the eyes. Then we take some Vallejo model color deep yellow and we put a little dot of that in each eye. This is really going to make those eyes pop and kind of give a glow effect. Now it's time to start highlighting these snakes. What we're going to do is we're going to take some pure white and we're going to slowly introduce that into our cold gray, gradually increasing that highlight with each step. We're going to gradually build this up until at the end we have a pure white final highlight. Almost forgot about the fingernails. We're going to cut all these in with that Army Painter Matte Black. Now I only actually own one flesh tone and that is Barbarian Flesh from Army Painter. So what I did for the base coat on this face is I took some heavy brown and I mixed that in with the Barbarian Flesh to give me a darker tone from which I can build up the highlights. And then here I just keep adding some Barbarian Flesh to that mixture from earlier and increasing the highlight on this face. And we're going to have 100% Barbarian Flesh loaded into our brush for the brightest highlight on this face. Then we come in with some dark red and we fill in the eye sockets to this severed head. After that we come in with some white and this gives the eye kind of a bloodshot look. And I don't paint a pupil because I want it to look like the eyes are rolling into the back of the head. After that, we apply a base coat of Vallejo Game Color Heavy Golden Brown to the hair on this severed head. Then we come in with some of that deep yellow and we highlight the hair.
I ended up spending way more time on this hair than I actually thought I did. Way too much time. With the hair finally complete, we take some dark tone wash from Army Painter and we apply that to all of our armor bits. We're going to add this to our leather belts as well. And then after we are done shading all of the armor, we're going to take that dark tone wash to all of our feathers. Then the final job we have for that dark tone wash is we're going to line all of the snakes in the hair. Now for whatever reason I did a horrible job with recording this, but the main premise is to take a nice pin line to all of the deepest recesses in the hair. And then we take some Army Painter Soft Tone and we recess shade all of the belly scales. We're also going to recess shade the rattle and all the other tan parts that we painted on this model. After that we paint the rim black in preparation for basing. I did the basing off screen. There wasn't really a lot of real estate on this base for me to go crazy with it. Uh, what I ended up doing is I ended up adding some sand with a strong tone wash and then I added some army painter field green grass and some bush tufts to the base to make it look like she was standing on a field like the rest of my army is based. And with that my peeps we have a completed Medusonia. I spent about 10 hours on this model. Since it's a limited edition sculpt, I really wanted to take my time with it. Allowing myself to slow down on this model gave me the time to really practice those more time consuming techniques like glazing and layering and wet blending and trying to get those nice smooth transitions. So what did you guys think of my take on the Medusonia? Did you like it? Is it good? Is it great? Is it trash? Should I throw it away? Let me know in the comments section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot. I'm out of here for now. Remember, just keep painting, peeps.